Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling leak code problem 1353, maximum number of events that can be attended. This is a really great problem that shows the power of a greedy approach combined with the right data structure. Let's break it down. So here's the setup. We're given a list of events. Each event has a start day and an end day. We can attend any event on any day between its start and end, inclusive. The catch is, we can only attend one event per day. Our goal is to figure out the absolute maximum number of events we can possibly attend. Let's walk through this simple example. We have three events. The first is available on day one and two. The second on day two and three. And the third on day three and four. So how can we maximize our attendance? Let's think day by day. On day one, what can we attend? Only the first event. So let's do that. Cool, that's one event attended. Now it's day two. The second event is now available. Let's attend it. That's two events down. Finally, on day three, the third event starts today. So we can attend that one on day three. And just like that, we've managed to attend all three events. The maximum is three. Thinking about that example leads to a powerful idea. When we have a choice of which event to attend on a certain day, which one is the best pick? The best strategy is actually a greedy one. On any given day, always choose to attend the available event that will end the soonest. Why? Because this frees up our schedule as quickly as possible, leaving future days open for other events. It maximizes our future options. So how do we turn that greedy idea into an algorithm? First, to make things easier, let's sort all the events by their start day. This way, we can process them chronologically. Then, we'll loop through every single day, from day one, up to the last possible day an event could run. To keep track of which events are currently available on any given day, we'll use a min heap. This data structure is perfect, because it will always give us the event with the smallest end day in a flash. So, for each day in our loop, let's call it day D, we'll follow a simple checklist. First we look at our sorted list and add any events that have started on or before day D into our min heap. Next we do a little cleanup. We look at the heap and remove any events whose end day has already passed. Finally, after our heap is up to date with all currently available events, we check if there's anything in it. If there is, we attend the one at the top, the one that ends soonest, by popping it from the heap and adding one to our total count. Alright, here's the Python code that puts it all together. First, we sort the events. Then we set up our main loop to go through each day. Day. Inside the loop, you can see the logic we just discussed. The first while loop adds the end times of any newly available events into our priority queue which is called pjju. The second while loop is our cleanup crew, removing events from the queue that have already ended. And finally, if there's anything left in the priority queue, we attend one, popping the soonest ending event, and we increment our answer. So how efficient is this? For time complexity, we have a couple of things to consider. First, sorting the events takes n log n time, where n is the number of events. Then, our main loop runs up to t times, where t is the maximum n day. The heap operations across all days also contribute n log n p's. The analysis combines these to give a time complexity of big O of t plus n, all times log n p's. For space, we need to store events in our priority queue. In the worst case, all events could be available at once, so we need space for n items. That gives us a space complexity of big O of n. So, to recap the big ideas here. First, sometimes the simple greedy choice at each step can lead to the best overall solution. The key insight for this problem was realizing that best means picking the event that finishes the soonest, which keeps our options open. And finally, whenever you need to efficiently find the smallest item in a changing collection, a heap is almost always the right tool for the job. I hope that walkthrough was helpful. If you found this useful, please hit that like button, subscribe for more leap code explanations, and feel free to ask any questions in the comments. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, you can always support the channel through the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, happy coding, and I'll see you in the next one.